Okay, writing this structure, the first thing I look at is the parent name. I look at the suffix here is the hexane. The hexane tells me the hex is a certain number of carbons that are in the longest continuous chain. And the ane tells me that they're alkanes. And again, if you don't know this, you have to memorize this. Or if you're lucky to have the reference tables that we have, we go there. Table P is our first friend. And we look at hex. And we see that hex is a 6. And the ane means we're dealing with alkanes, saturated hydrocarbons with single bonds between the carbons. Now, I would draw a straight chain hydrocarbon with six carbons that are single bonded between the carbons, but I see this cyclo. This tells me that the tail is bonded to the head. So I've got a six-sided object, a cyclic compound, where the long chain is bonded to the head. So cyclohexane tells me that I've got a six-sided structure. So I got one carbon here. Uh, one carbon here, another carbon here, another carbon here, and another carbon here. I got single bonds between them because they're anes. And what do I have attaching? I have an ethyl group. That's my attachment to the what? To the carbon chain. So this is the carbon chain. And I have the ethyl group attaching. Now, because it's cyclic, it's hard to know what the first carbon is. So we're just going to, you can put this really any place and it'll be the first carbon since these is, this is the same shape all the way around. When you start having multiple uh, things on a cyclic compound, then you have to start na uh, numbering them. And that's not part of what we're doing here today. So I'm going to put the ethyl group right here. Now the question is, what's an ethyl group? Well, an eth, according to table P, is a two carbon uh, attaching group. Now we dealt with uh, methyls, or one carbon group, but an eth is a two carbon attaching group. So I have two carbons. Let's say this is attaching to the chain, or the longest continuous chain, which is what we've been using as that. The rest have to be what? Have to be H's. So we have a two carbon hydrocarbon chain that's attaching to the longest continuous chain, which is the parent name, the hexane, the cyclohexane in this case. So what I have here is a CH2 that denotes this part of the structure. Then I have a CH3, which is my terminal part of the um, ethyl group. So it's a CH3, CH2, and that's attaching to the chain. Now if I write it on this side, uh, where I'm going to attach it here, I'd write the CH2 and the CH3 right here. Now, why do I put the CH2 in this side? Because that needs to be bonded to the carbon on the carbon chain and to the methyl group. So if I was to write it out this way, this goes to two H's, and carbon must make what? Four bonds, and that's why it looks like this. So you could write all of this out, but this is a nice little condensed way to do that. Now, we're not done. If you leave it like this, this would be wrong. Every carbon must make four bonds. So how you write that, okay, these are tetrahedrals, so it is kind of difficult to try to maintain that. So as long as we see what, okay, two H's for every carbon here, that'll work. Notice this carbon only has one H, and the reasoning here is because it already bonds to two carbons, and it's bonding to the what, the ethyl group. Okay, and that's your attaching carbon, and everybody else has the right number of C's. Now, you could draw this another way. With cyclic compounds, we have a way to do this, or with carbon backbone chain, sometimes you can see drawings that look like this, where you have the structure, the carbon backbone, in this case is a cyclic compound, and then we have the C2CH3. It is assumed in higher organic level courses that you have the H's drawn here. So they just assume that you know that there's two H's for every one of these carbons that are in these little points right here. And they don't think them to be very important. And they're right. It's the carbons that are really important. So you'll see cyclic compounds drawn like that. So there it is.